Questions continue to mount in Alberta surrounding the High River gun grab. One High River resident who did not live in the flooded area had his gun seized while he was out of town. Josh Gernick is tracking the story from our Calgary Bureau, and he joins us now. Josh, what do you have for us? Well, I have, you know, a, a pretty good conversation that I had with the RCMP uh, today, just trying to flesh this story out and get a sense of it. Okay, so this is what we know. Greg Caviezel, he says that um, the RCMP went to his home three times during the course of their, you know, scoring the uh, town, trying to find survivors, right? But here's the thing. His home is in an area of High River that was not touched by flood water, right? And it, there, was a, there was actually half the neighborhood stayed behind, really, uh, until they finally did evacuate. But the point is, according to his neighbor, the RCMP entered his home three times. Okay, The first time was to go and check for survivors. The second time was to go and turn the electricity off. Now, after that, his neighbor, who uh, actually helped the RCMP you know, into his home to avoid them breaking down the door, which Kvizel uh, uh, was uh, fine with, he said that uh, the third time the neighbor was not there and she knows that there was a third time because that's when the RCMP had to have taken the two antique rifles that the man that the man owned now these two rifles one of them is a 1912 Winchester rifle another one's an antique in his family and to this when we asked about it because the, um, the man says that these uh, rifles were hidden in his basement and everything and tucked away, not loaded, uh, hadn't been fired in 20 years. This is what the RCMP had to say about the fact that they, in our, in, you know, our mind, they're not in plain sight. So let's take a listen. It could be under a bed, in a closet, on top of a, uh, a place where somebody uh, could, hide, could hide. And uh, this is where those firearms were taken inappropriately secured. But I thought they were only seizing guns in plain sight, though. Well, plain sight. If they happen to open a closet uh, to see if someone is there and they see they see a firearm, of course they would seize it. Okay. It, it, it is in plain sight. It is in plain sight. You know, like upon searching uh, for people, uh, if they if they see a firearm that is in a closet, maybe if you stand in the middle of the room, you would say it's not in plain sight. All right, Brian. So listen to that reasoning. It's in plain sight because we're opening up closets, looking in nooks and crannies for pets, little kids, and once we see the gun there, then it's in plain sight. And so it's in plain sight and we can take it. Uh, you answer me that. It's, it's a bit of a head scratcher, isn't it, Josh? Yeah, I, uh, I mean, so it's something that we're going to have to keep going on, right, uh, mm. asking some questions. We do know that most of the guns are back in people's hands. They announced that 517 of the 539 are back to homeowners. We also asked them about uh, whether they actually used the list of the uh, PAL, the liar, uh, firearms licenses, to find these people. They said no. They also said there was no direct order from above uh, in order for these people, these officers, to take these guns. You said that these uh, they were just acting under the about Alberta emergency management uh, you know law there and that uh, they were just doing their job what they were supposed to be doing mm. Brian? just doing your job I don't know I want I don't want to say we were heard that one before but anyway thanks for this Josh no problem that's Josh Gernick in Calgary